Hello, and welcome to the second video of our Protection Smith build. The last video that uh, that I took ended up in a two-use forge on the 100-foot floor here, which is not optimal at all. Uh, as I said before, you can get a two, three, or four-use forge here. And I prefer the four-use forge. So what I did was I had our character Salantar there commit suicide, and he was reincarnated as another Salantar who, on his very next run, found a two-use forge right here. Uh, sorry, a four-use forge right here in the dungeon. Uh, I'm kind of brain fried today, so I'm probably going to sound even dumber than normal. Uh, and honestly, even if you're just a little bit sleepy when you play these games, you can just get killed, so... Who knows, maybe this won't demonstrate the survivability of this build as well as I thought. But basically, I did what I did last time to get here. I cleaned out the first floor, came down to the second floor, cleaned out the second floor, and now we have a pool of about uh, 820 experience that we can use for our smithing purposes here if we need it. I haven't really found much in the way of equipment. Uh, if you look at the equipment video or uh, window here, you'll notice there's no gloves, no helmet, no shield, no cloak, no armor. Uh, all I have is a pair of boots, so if somebody stabs me in the foot, I'll be a bit protected. But other than that, I'm wide open. And I, more importantly, I haven't found a good weapon yet. That's, that's more important than this armor set of things, because we're about to make some armor. Um, I found a good short sword, but it's not really what I'm going for in this build. So anyways, let's get started with the smithing, because that's like what you're interested in. Um, this character, as I said before, built up to 11 smithing. And the skills I took were Armorsmith, which just lets you make basic armor. Um, with its base dice, base scores, nothing special. Enchantment allows you to make uh, what we call special items. So you've seen in the past I found boots of stealth, or, well, you maybe didn't see that in the past. But uh, I know in a past video I found a, a leather armor that had a special designation, and I just couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, that lets us build these kinds of, of armors to give us resistances or extra protection, things like that. So I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, at this stage in the game, when I get a four-use forge, which is always because I always reset to get this, um, there are a few items that I always make because of dangers that I know are coming up in the dungeon. The first and most obvious one is armor. Um, I like to make a set of chain mail here. So my options here are... Let me go over this a little bit. So all these things are blacked out because I don't have the smithing skills required or the abilities required to build them. So if I had the weapon smith ability, I'd be able to make any of these, uh, even arrows. If I had the jeweler ability, I'd be able to make rings, amulets, and lights, <coughs> which are very, very handy to make, um, but cost too much experience at this point for me. And then because I have armor smith, I can make all these things. So if all I had was armor smith, this is all I'd be able to do. I'd be able to pick, you know, some chain mail. Um, I think we found mail in a previous video. We didn't find a long corslet. A uh, long corslet is like the extreme trade-off of high protection and melee and evasion penalties. So the more protection you get from a piece of armor uh, at base, the more it, it cripples you. So here you can see it takes away two from your melee score and four from your evasion. So even if you absorb a lot of damage, 2d5, the range on that is quite great. It's, it's two to ten points of damage. And if a monster really gets a high melee roll on you because of your low evasion, they're going to critical you and, and blow past your protection anyway. So long corslets, not so great at this point in the game. They're pretty good later on when your evasion is super high anyways, if you, if you go that way. But long story short, I go for male corslets here. And mithril corslets are blacked out because you actually need to find... Well, I don't know what that was. You actually need to find mithril. Um, you won't find it in its base form. You find, like lamps that are made of it or armor that's made of it and then you can go melt it down but not important now so let's make a male corslet and if i didn't have enchantment i wouldn't be able to pick this enchant menu here but because i have it i can so there's a few things you can do here i used to make uh chain mail of resilience a lot when i first started playing this build uh, which is why i thought initially i needed 12 smithing skill to to be useful here uh, resilience gives you a constitution bonus however it doesn't do it for you at first because um the way smithing works in Sill is, for any bonus you get, you have to give something up, uh, whether temporarily or permanently. So here, if you want to increase your constitution by one, it's actually going to cost you a point of constitution. So you'll get no net benefit. But it's only a constitution drain. And then later on, if you find a potion of constitution or a, a herb of restoration, anything that can give you your constitution back, you'll get it back. And now the sum of your base constitution plus what you get from the armor is higher than it would have been. So that's useful. However, 
I'm trying to survive like the next three or 400 feet and the odds of me finding something that's going to give me back that bonus in the next few hundred feet aren't high. And by the time it is high, I can probably find a con bonus a different way, either by buying a point or making this armor again later. So I've stopped doing this and instead I just go for uh, protection, which instead of giving us the base 2d4 uh, protection dice, it gives 2d5. So it's nothing super special, but it helps. Um, I think you can find male corslets that aren't enchanted, that just happen to have 2d5, but I'm not going to bank on it. So this is the first thing I'll make. And you'll see each uh, item that you create takes a certain amount of turns to make. This does, I don't think this burns through your turns. Um, it might burn through your turns that are, are counted towards how deep you have to be. So I don't know if this increases your min depth or not. Um, but what it does do is it makes you sit around doing nothing for a while so monsters can sneak up on you and and kill you. So the last thing you can do, no matter what skills you have with smithing, is you can try and increase or decrease the weight of your item. Uh, if you're going for a protection heavy build, you tend to want your armor to be heavier. And if you're going for a stealth heavy build, you want your armor to be lighter. In this case, moving the weight a big amount in either direction tends to increase the difficulty. And we're already like sitting at 11 and the max difficulty for this piece is 11 so we can't do too too much here but just to show you i'm going to increase the poundage here a bit which yeah so increasing it by a pound is really it's just like a kind of a drop of water in a bucket but uh, just for illustration purposes i'll do it usually i just leave it alone because at this stage being stealthy actually helps me sometimes i'll actually try to decrease the weight as much as possible um but anyhow this is all according to your play style so i'm just going to leave it there and let's make it. So let's see if we can get away with this. Um, smithing. Ah, there's a silly mold here. Okay, let me just kill this thing. Smithing creates light around you, and if you see a threat around you, you'll, you'll stop smithing. Ah, this is a real interruption. So it also makes a lot of noise. Um, and monsters will hear the noise and come to see what's up. And these ones, hopefully I'll get to them before they pour in the door, but I didn't. That was a scout. So the scout probably heard it and called his buddies. Okay. These guys aren't very smart. I would have stayed outside. Oh, he dropped a shield. That's nice of him. Where's the scout? I don't think I killed him. Oh. Are there stairs in here? Oh, no, they're up there. Okay, good. I scared the heck out of them. Uh, I'm going to go... Is this guy going to beat me to it? Yeah, he will. Who's shouting? That shouting. Ah. So you can see, even on this floor, smithing can be a dangerous proposition because everybody hears you doing it and they'll come investigate and then you're trapped in this room where... Oh my goodness. Where you're uh, kind of sitting in the dark unless you have a high light radius. Oh, why aren't I wearing the shield? Hello. I'm pretty sure I'm going to kill these guys, but is this scout still alive? Goodness. Oh, I made a mistake. Now they can surround me. Sorry for the tedium here, but this is really what smithing is about. It can be tedious. Uh, like I said, this isn't bad right now because these monsters are pretty pathetic. Uh, but... There are certain kinds of really annoying monsters that when they hear you at later floors and you're trying to forge something good, they will make your life heck. Uh, there are certain monsters in this game who can cause earthquakes and like wreck the dungeon around you. That is enormously frustrating when you uh, are trying to forge because it'll knock holes in your, your forge walls here and then everybody can hear you. Here I have two doors, that's kind of insulating. Anyhow, once you've started creating uh, a piece of equipment, it stays on the forge, so I only have 16 turns left, I was really close to being done. So I can just resume, and now I've got my male corslet of protection, so I'm going to wield that. And you can see I got a big jump in protection here. My evasion took a hit, so did my melee actually. Alright, that's the first thing I like to make, so male corslet of protection. And I'm going to put a little note here, um, male corslet of protection. What that allows me to do is when I go to look at my build, notes. This keeps track of all the 
abilities that I've taken or special um, levels that I've entered, I can also remind myself that I made this here. If you create an artifact, which you can do with a different ability called Artifice, it'll do it automatically for you. But for little pathetic pieces of equipment like what I'm making, it you kind of have to do it manually. And the reason why I do this is because if you go to um, the Angband fan site or whatever, the dev site, uh, angband.3oska.cz, I'll put it in the, the comment for this video. There's actually like a ladder where you can go look at other characters that people have played, and you can upload your own characters, and it gives people a better idea of how you tweak your build. All right, so the second thing I like to make is, what is the second thing I like to make? Oh yeah, this is super important. The boots. Um, there's an ability that I talked about before called sprinting, and I think I tried to take it the first time we played the game, where I was going straight evasion and, and melee. So I don't want to spend all that experience on evasion just to meet the requirements to get to sprinting, and then spend more experience on dodging and sprinting, because I said before that dodging is pretty useless. So what I can do here is, for pretty cheap, I can create a set of leather boots of speed, and they just give me the ability, sprinting. Uh, it costs 500 experience, which is how much it would cost to buy an ability anyways, but that's really low compared to all the experience I'd have to dump into evasion and its prereqs to get it. And it's a very useful ability. So. I always do this here, and it, like I said, it's pretty easy to make. It's it only takes nine skill, and 500 experience is a lot, but it's not the end of the world. If it saves my life, it's great. So I'll put those on. I don't need these crummy leather boots anymore. The third thing I like to make um, is something that's going to give me light. Like there's a lot of stuff I could create here that would help me. I could create a really good shield, like say a kite shield of deflection is really handy, it gives you a bit more evasion, it gives you a lot of protection, or even just a round shield of protection, uh, of deflection helps. Um, a cloak, a really good cloak can go a long way. Uh, protection is a little bit out of my reach right now, but stealth would help counteract um, all the weight that I just put on my body, and I can even increase it a bit. However, what becomes really important in the next few floors is identifying threats before they're right in my face. And right now my light radius is only one, because all I have is torches. Torches only have a light radius of one. If I find a lamp, I'll have two. If I find a really good lamp of brightness or something, I'll have three. Uh, if I have like a sword that has brilliance on it, I'll get a bit more, but right now I just have one. And especially with those purple molds everywhere uh, that I discussed before, um, right now my will is a bit high, so I could probably resist, but basically the farther out I can see, the better. So the long story is that I want something that's going to give me some light. And I can put light on a helm. Um, there are three kinds of helms you can build without mithril. There's just a normal helm, which is great on its own. There's a great helm, which is really heavy, gives you a tiny bit more protection, but also hurts your evasion more. I kind of like these. Although, I always stress out about this number, it's pretty big. I, I wouldn't want to wear 8 pounds on my head, that's very ridiculous. And then there's this dwarf mask, oh, it's also 8 pounds. Um, it gives you resistance to fire, it's really cheap to make. Fire resistance is pretty easy to find, and resistances in this game stack, so if you have three sources of fire resistance, and a dragon breathes fire on you, uh, you barely feel it. This is not, this is like different from most of the Angband style games, where uh, resistances don't stack, unless you have a spell that does it, and then any equipment that does it. So if you're used to that, it's different here. But uh, the reason why I want to take fire resist here is because fire breathing monsters start showing up around uh, five or six hundred feet. And that's where things start getting hard anyway, so let's just make our lives easier. And plus dwarf mask, that's pretty cool. It's rot in a fearsome visage. I would like to be fearsomely visaging my opponents at this stage, because most things are pretty scary. So I picked dwarf mask. Why can't I use Brilliance? Oh, right. I forgot something important. So a Dwarf Mask of Brilliance costs 13, and I only have 11. So that's pathetic, right? The other thing it does is it reduces your grace. Uh, I can afford to take a, a point of grace drain right now, because it doesn't do a heck of a lot. It'll reduce my smithing by one, which is exactly what I don't want right now. Um, but the good thing is I have this Lembus bread. All elves get it as their food. And when you eat one, it restores one point of grace. So this is not like a huge crippling penalty. If I wanted to get rid of it right now, I could. 
However, what I don't want to do is reduce my grace right now because I want to smith one more thing. I still have one more thing I can make. So I could make a fourth piece of equipment to make myself stronger. But a secondary thing I can do is invest in my future smithing pursuits by creating a pair of gloves that um, have forge stuff on them. So right now I don't have any gloves at all, right? So I can wear them, but it's really not going to help me that much because they don't give you any armor bonus. But I think I should be able to get... Yeah, so I can get a plus two smithing bonus on these gloves. And all it costs is some experience. So I'm going to make those right now, and this will let me make my helmet that I want. I think this is all I wanted to do here. Cool. So you may be noticing that that was supposed to cost 200 experience if you took a look, and I only lost 100. I had 557 before I started. The reason why is because I've never seen these gloves of the forge before. So when I made them, I automatically identified them, and that gave me 100 experience. So you lose 200, you gain 100, the net is 100. So now that I have these gloves, I can wear them. And now I'll be able to make that helmet that I've always wanted to make here. So let's go make the dwarf mask. Now I can make a brilliance. Defiance is really good too, actually. Uh, resisting fear is handy. Uh, remember those mulep things that were scaring us in the first couple of videos? Uh, that's great. I already have decent will, so I probably won't be that vulnerable to fear. Um, but because this base is kind of will-based, sorry, this build is kind of will-based, the will bonus would also help. But light helps more, so I'm going to take that. Do I want to change the weight that much? Let's see if we can give our guy a bit less of a headache. Yeah, it's really no different. All right. So after making that dwarf mask, you'll see my grace got drained. Yellow means drained. And you can see it in the character sheet, too. I used to have four, but you minus one, you get three. However, you see right now, I can only see in a one set of dots around me. But when I put on this Dwarf Mask of Brilliance, now I can see two. And your character sheet also tells you. Light radius, two. Cool. So now we're, we're pretty buffed up. Our protection is quite high, 5 to 16. Weapon still sucks, but we have all this cool equipment. And when we get to our next forge, who knows when that will be. Because uh, there aren't any more guaranteed ones after this. Uh, I'll have plus two to my forging skill. The slight problem with these gloves... Um, all it says is it improves your smithing by two. If there's a monster that spits acid and you leave equipment in your uh, pack or you're wearing it, unless it says something here like cannot be damaged by stuff, um, it can be destroyed by, by an acid spitter. So if, if you have these gloves and you just put them in your inventory and you get acid splashed on them, they'll just die. They'll, they'll burn up. If you're wearing them, they might take a, a protection penalty, but I think because leather gloves don't have an evasion bonus or a protection bonus that when they get splashed there's nothing to drain so they just die uh, they just melt i think i've lost my gloves before like that but i'm gonna keep wearing them for now because i just don't have anything else to put in that slot but as soon as i find something better i'll, I'll keep them some people i was talking to one of the guys on the forum and i he watched one of the videos where i said uh you know i don't understand why you find leather gloves in the dungeon or things like a filthy rag or a robe because they give you no bonuses at all but if you have nothing in your armor slot, or in your glove slot, but you have other armor that's useful on your body, um, wearing useless armor can actually give the acid attack more targets to have to pick from, so it reduces the chance that one of your good pieces of armor will get damaged. But it's a very esoteric use of those items, which I think is pretty cool. But not cool enough for me to do it. So let's go down these stairs. So that's it for forging. Now we're on the... 150 foot floor, the third floor, and we've got some experience. So now that I don't have to worry about um, having to potentially smith things anymore, I'm going to stop, or I'm going to invest this experience. Let's start buffing will, because there's a will ability that I'm gunning for next in this build, and that's called hardiness. So what I used to do is um, I used to bark up the evasion skill tree first, and I'd invest <clears throat> 9 points in evasion, which is a lot of experience, because I'd want to be able to get heavy armor use. Heavy armor use, when you're wearing a lot of armor, it gives you a big protection bonus. That's basically the gist of it. But you have to take blocking first. However, that investment in evasion doesn't really protect against a lot of the things that we're going to encounter, whereas 
will does. Um, by increasing your will, you resist a lot of negative effects that monsters try to force on you. Plus, we get something similar called hardiness. And we're going to want both at some point. But um, I find this is better to go for first. And what we're really gunning for is this thing called critical resistance. Uh, when you're wearing a lot of armor and you don't put much investment in evasion, the biggest downside to that is that monsters can critical you like crazy. So you want to be able to counteract that. But right now we're going to concentrate on balancing our will and our, our melee scores until we get to like around 10 or so. And then we'll go to the next stage of the build. So I'm going to splunk around. I'll probably finish this floor and then we'll call it a day. But you'll see before, like I was getting whacked around by some of these orcs and I had to fight a bit strategically, which costs turns. Like every time I'm dodging around inside corridors and stuff, it costs time. And now these fellows are going to have a lot harder time hurting me. Uh, they might hit fairly often, but they're going to have a harder time actually hurting me. And right now I'm not super concerned about killing these things because they only give me one experience. So I just really want them to go away. So if I can just hurt them enough to scare them away, that's that's more than good enough for me. You can't fight too stupidly though or you're just going to die. Alright. I think a few of them ran away. They'll probably make some noise, but let's go get that potion. Uh, one reason for wanting to kill a lot of these orcs is that they tend to drop some stuff. And anything you can pick up is something you can use. Do I have a bow? Yeah, once I have a bow and a fair amount of arrows, I just stop picking up these throwing items. Like, I guess I don't have anything in my inventory right now, so it wouldn't hurt. That's really what I wanted. It was a long sword. I don't need all these stupid curved swords anymore. Have I killed one of these yet? Nope. Oh, yes, but still worth the experience. And you can see, like, he, he just hit me a bunch of times, and I didn't get confused. Um, the will bonus that I have, or just the, the points in will, help with that resistance. Let's walk around this dungeon. Yeah, and now things like these wolves are going to have a lot harder time with me, because they don't do a heck of a lot of damage when they hit. And even if they critical, their damage dice are so small that uh, the total damage is not great. Wolves tend to do damage by repeatedly hitting you a little bit, until later anyways. Do I want this? Let's see what happens if I run around without a shield for a while. If I start getting really hurt, I'll switch back to wearing a shield and using the longsword. But I like to see really big numbers flash, so you gives me a good feeling. Alright, at this stage in the game, if I wear a ring and it doesn't auto-identify, um, it can be a few things. It can be um, a stat-boosting ring that actually just doesn't boost the stat, so it can be a, a ring of strength plus zero, which sounds useless, but it sustains your strength. So if you meet somebody that tries to drain your strength or you accidentally or you eat a herb of weakness or something, um, it'll help you with that resistance roll. It can be a ring of sustenance, which reduces your hunger by uh, two thirds, so you get hunger mu hungry much more slowly, which it can be hard to find food in the first like 500 feet. So this can be useful. However, it could also be a ring of hunger, which basically triples your rate of, uh, of food consumption. So I prefer just not to wear it until I can find a way to identify it. Because um, really if I'm already investing points in will and I have a really hard time finding food, there's a very cheap ability here called uh, Mind Over Body, which I don't really want to buy if I don't have to, but it does the same thing as a Ring of Sustenance, so. Now we found a staff. Identifying staffs can be a bit of a pain. Um, one good way to do it is to position yourself like right exactly like we are right now. Um, you want there to be a set of stairs, an open door, and a closed door, because there are three different types of staffs that will be identified by trying to use them at this point. So if it's a staff of summoning, the monsters will come up the stairs, so you'll see it, possibly. I don't know if they can come up any stairs. If it's a staff of imprisonment, it'll close the open door and lock it. 
and that's a useful staff, so you don't really want that. And if it's a staff of freedom, which is pretty helpful, it'll open the closed door. So let's use the staff now. And if it's some other kind of staff, a lot of times at this stage in the game, it's a, a staff called Sanctity, which breaks curses. And I just won't know. Yeah, I'm guessing this is Sanctity, see, because I tried to use it, and it worked, because it says I tried it. But I still don't know what it is. Although I heard a click. So I wonder if it's a staff of freedom, and I was just too stupid to know. Okay, it's a staff of imprisonment, and I guess the effect happened so far away that I didn't notice. That's cool, I've never had that happen before. But regardless of the fact, I'm just going to get rid of it. And um, being locked indoors like this is really not that much of a pain. You can just smash through them. Somehow these wolves still haven't heard me. What? My stealth is only two. So much for the dominance of the animal kingdom. Get out of here. Okay. Oh, you're still worth ten experience. I'll kill you again. I always wonder how these monsters feel, you know, having an elf kind of like peer at them and then just suddenly rush at them with a brandished sword because they're worth more experience. But yeah, I'm just taking wild swings at these guys and they're not doing anything to me. This armor is useless to me. That's useful. So these potions, these murky brown potions, are going to be helpful to us with this build because our will is going to be high. And uh, as I said before, that it's this is the orcish liquor or whatever. And if you drink it to restore your HP, there's a chance that it'll stun you, which in the middle of a nasty fight is not what you want. But if you have high will, it's almost completely unlikely to happen. So, Short sword, not useful. These smoky potions showing up everywhere. They're either anti-venom or something bad, probably. But that's it for that floor, and you'll notice that like, I barely took a stretch. I only have 34 HP, which is less than our last character. I think our last character had 49 or something, but he was really getting whittled down, um, especially past like this floor, I guess. Whereas with this build, once you get the hang of it, and once you get the hang of the basic um, monster AI and, and game mechanics, it's really unlikely that you're going to die in the first few hundred floors. Few, first few hundred feet, sorry, not a few hundred floors. Uh, there's only 20 floors. Just because it's it's hard for monsters to punch through this high protection base that you have, even with your terrible evasion. Um, and at that, this point, if something does start hurting me a bit more, I'll just switch to my longsword and shield, and my damage output won't be that much worse, but I'll be a lot harder to hurt. Let's head down here. Um, I'll toss some points. So what I'm going to do is get Will and Melee to parry. So 5 and 5. And then once they're at parry, I'll just keep boosting them um, one and one. Because what you can't do with this build is completely neglect melee. Um, the dangerous thing with, with creating characters this way is that nothing can hurt you really. Which is cool, except you start getting kind of cocky. And there's a pretty discreet difficulty increase with every, um, every floor that you go down. And I mean discreet ETE, like measurable and finite. But I also mean big. Because... Uh, you know, right now, this floor isn't really going to be that tough for us either. But once you get around 400, there are certain monsters that just do a lot of damage. And regardless of your protection, um, they're still going to hurt you. And so you need to be able to kill them fast. And if you forget to increase your melee, you'll start missing or you'll, you'll miss criticals where you should have gotten criticals. And it just takes too long to kill them. Um, and we'll see there are a couple of uh, wandering monsters like trolls and stuff that actually regenerate. And if your melee is too low, you just can't kill them. Like, you'll be stabbing them and they'll keep healing like Wolverine. Um, but that's not going to happen for a couple hundred feet. So I think I'm going to make this a shorter video. That way people who are curious about uh, learning how to forge the equipment for this build can just go look at the beginning and then, you know, check out the rest of the dungeon and we'll be done. And we can pick up with the adventure on the next video um, at 200 feet. We'll see you next time.